While we're all familiar with SafeLight and its core product, during the last 18 months, Tom and Renee have created a company, that culture, a company culture that thrives on innovation, not only on the production of autoglass, but all, in all fa various facets of SafeLight's associate, customer, and client experiences. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Tom Feeney and Renee Cachello. Transformation, innovation, those are probably not two words that you would think about when thinking about a company like SafeLight. In the next 30 minutes, we hope to demonstrate to you just how powerful those words are to a company like SafeLight. So good morning. In case you weren't paying attention, I'm Tom Feeney, and I'm joined on stage by Renee Cachillo, my colleague. So some audience participation. How many in the audience, by show of hands, have ever heard of Safe Light? That's wonderful. Good. Not a lot of energy out there, so let's see. Do you know our jingle? I asked, do you know our jingle? Can you sing our jingle? One, two, three. Safe light repairs. Is that not beautiful? <laughs> now I know you're awake. Here you go, Don. A gift. I'll say I never gave you anything. Again, a little bit more audience participation. So by show of hands, how many in the audience in the last five years have had to have vehicle glass repair replacement work done? Doesn't matter if Safe Light did the work or not. In the last five years, show of hands. Keep your hands up if you've had it in the last three years. Now keep your hands up if you had it in the last year. Look around. This is why I cry myself to sleep every night. <laughs> Everybody raised their hand. They've all heard about Safe Flight, and by my estimation, less than 5% of you have even needed our services in the last year. This is depressing. And I have to tell you that it's because we operate in a negative services category. Nobody wants to do business with us. Now, we're not alone. The dental industry also is in the negative service category. Anybody want to have a root canal today? I don't think so. And funeral directors. Anybody wake up this morning and say, I think I'm going to call my local funeral director? No. But in a negative services category, transformation, innovation is a must. And that leads me to talk a little bit about SafeLight, just a quick introduction. SafeLight Group is the holding company of our family of brands. We are headquartered right here in Columbus, Ohio. We've been here since 1990. We have about 14,000 associates across the United States, 85% of all of our associates are customer facing. They are the customer service reps who answer the phones, the technicians who go out and do the work. In our world, those are the heroes of our business. We have three strategic business units. Safe Light Auto Glass is the brand you probably know, it's the one we advertise. We operate in all 50 states, every major city. In 2017, we served about six million customers. We can actually service 98% of the United States population same day or next day through one of our mobile glass shops or one of our fixed facilities or super centers. Safe Flight Solutions may be a business you don't know about, about Safe Flight. So we started this business about 25 years ago to meet the needs of our insurance and fleet partners. Today, we have partnerships with well over 200 insurance and fleet companies. I would guess many, if not all, of the insurance companies that you've insured your vehicles with are clients and partners of us, of ours. In 2017, this business unit served about 4 million customers. And our third business unit is the service, uh, uh, service Auto Glass, which is our wholesale business. To leverage our inventory, to leverage our infrastructure of warehouses and distribution centers, we sell glass, parts, 
We sell ancillary supplies to independent glass shops, body shops, dealerships. And they service uh, anywhere from six to 700,000 customers a year. So that's our business in a, in a little bit. Um, in 2017, we celebrated our 70th uh, anniversary. Now we respect our history. We know and we honor our history. But trust me, we live in the future. Hence, we have built a culture that allows us to think of ourselves like a seven-year-old startup. And that leads me to the beginning of our transformation, which goes all the way back to 2008. Now, I don't know how many in the room remember 2008, the financial crisis. No business in America, in fact, the world, could predict with any degree of certainty about what was going to happen. We were no different. But our approach to it, I think, was slightly different. We saw it as an opportunistic time. We saw it as an opportunity to transform Safe Light from what it was to what we wanted it to be. And the way we did that, and the way we started it, was by asking ourselves these two fundamental questions. Who comes first and what comes first? So these are questions any company represented in this room could ask. There is no right or wrong answer, but once answered, you have to be ruthless and rigorous to make sure all of your strategies are aligned to the answer. So for Safe Light, when we asked the question, we knew that we were shareholder focused. Everything we did was around our financial metrics. We made decisions off the P&L. And in order to move our company from good to great, we knew we had to become a people first organization. We needed to have happy, engaged associates. We needed to have associates who, when they came to work every day, they came because they wanted to come, not because they had to come. And the second transformation we went through was around the discipline of our business. We knew we were an operationally focused company, which meant we were internally focused. And in order to achieve the full potential of Safe Life, we knew that we had to transform our business from being operationally focused to customer driven. We created a strategic framework around this transformation. We established two strategic pillars from which everything we have done and everything we will do will be viewed through the lenses of these two strategic pillars, people powered and customer driven. So this is the definition of people-powered. There are four cornerstones to our people-powered strategy. Leadership, focus, talent, and caring. I say cornerstones because they're independent, yet interrelated. And the definition is very, very powerful, as you can read. We drive our business performance with an obsessive focus on having talented and engaged people who deliver extraordinary results. Not average results, not above average results, extraordinary results. And the second pillar was around being customer driven. And similar to people powered, we didn't have cornerstones, we had four elements around listen, focus, create, and delight. The distinction between the two, in the customer driven elements, they feed into one another. They're a continuous virtual cycle. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Listen to the customer, create, focus on what they're telling you, create solutions, and then delight them. Once again, we took the opportunity to establish an objective so that our organization could be aligned. We achieve extraordinary results, once again, by looking at our business through the eyes of a customer, making it easy for them to do business with us, and making sure the experience is memorable. Now, those two strategic pillars were put in place back in 2009, same words, and we have stayed true to those all along. In business today, you read an awful lot about perseverance and grit, two really powerful words. And there's certainly characteristics that we embrace as well. However, if I were to use words to describe our transformation, the words vision, culture, alignment, and leadership would come to mind. 
When you think about vision, it's about painting the picture of the future. And when you paint that picture, that's actually the easy part. Then comes developing a purpose-driven culture. That is hard work, especially for a company like ours that was already pretty old. How do you change the culture of a company? It's like changing the tires on a car moving 100 miles an hour down the road. It's not easy. For us, we introduced a purpose. We exist to make a difference and to bring unexpected happiness to people's everyday lives. So we answered the who, we answered the what, and now we are addressing the why. And if you go along this chart, you get to the how. You get there through people, you get there through leadership, you get there through a different approach. Instead of being a national company, we were gonna be a nationally powered, locally driven company. What that meant was empowering your people Chris Baker, our district manager from Columbus and Central Ohio is with us. He is the president of this division. That's how we want him to think. And there's 80 other Chris's around the country we want them to think that way. The other how is how do you organize? One thing is to transform. The other is to have the organization in place to do it. And I use as an example customer brand and technology. That's the team that Renee leads. Who ever thought of putting the customer experience, marketing, digital, and technology all under one leader? Well, we did. And I suggest to you it's a good way to go because it allows this transformation to accelerate because you're now stitching it all together. In a transformation, you have to take risks. You have to be bold. You have to act fast and prepare to fail. And that is why we opened an innovation lab about two years ago to experiment with new things, which is a great segue for me to introduce to you Renee Cachillo. Renee? Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Well, I'm excited to be here with you today and really share our innovation journey with you. So let's get started. Personally, I think that this quote really sums it all up. All of our businesses want to create solutions for our customers that deliver great customer experiences. And we use technology when necessary to make those come to life. But as Tom mentioned, in functionally organized companies, sometimes that can be challenging. We don't all have the same goals at the same time. And so it was really our mindset when we created customer branded technology that we went ahead and said, all right, this is really what we're looking for. And we really happened to see this quote afterwards, but we think it fits pretty perfectly. And with the pace of change now being controlled by customers, and with technology evolving so fast it's hard for any of us to keep up with it, this is really going to pay off. And our goal of being a customer-driven organization is not just about being great in Autoglass. We really want to be a truly customer-centric organization across any industry, bar none. And if we can accomplish that, then we'll also achieve our vision of being the greatest, most trusted, and admired service brand. And so how did we start on this journey? Well, we started by really listening to our customers. We heard from our customers that they loved our phone interaction. They liked to call and work with us that way, but that they also wanted to work with us digitally. And so we launched safelight.com three years ago and it has grown from 17% scheduling online to 57% in just three years in our direct-to-consumer channel. In addition, we also launched an On My Way text message. The customers told us that they wanted to hear from our technician, and they wanted to hear it fast, not through an email. And so we launched a text message that has really become one of the big milestones in our customer experience. And then we added Watch Us On Our Way, because I think all of us know we've gotten kind of used to that Uber experience and being able to see exactly when you're gonna arrive. And that was really our first artificial intelligence capability that we were able to launch. And coming soon, and what we've just started with is really two-way text. So I know that this can sound a little basic, but when you think about the fact that you could invite customers to work with you, you can call or text us. That's pretty powerful. And the millennials and younger generations, they're gonna love it. Now, it's important that you put a couple stakes in the ground when you're developing these things. 
One of the things that we decided to do was commit to being mobile responsive in design, which is hard. It's also important that you follow things and guidelines in how you design solutions for your customers. So we decided that we were gonna follow our user experience design team and customer focus groups that they led, rather than our personal opinions about how things should look. And we also think that analytics are really important to see the data, to actually see how customers are using the solutions that you design through innovation is critical. And it also helps you refine them through iteration testing and gets, get better and better. The other bold decision that we decided to make was by going omnichannel. And this was a big declaration for our company because as Tom mentioned, we're a 70-year-old company. And what Omnichannel allows customers to do is to really interact across channels any way they want to without having to repeat themselves. And so with that capability in mind, we launched Omnichannel, really became Omnichannel at the beginning of 2017, and now we can build true personalization and we can actually make that experience for repeat customers when they do happen really great. So you heard that Safe Flight Works, our innovation lab, opened up in the middle of 2016. And we were really excited with this great new launch. What this helped us do was really accelerate our entry into playing with new technologies and solutions out there. And that was powerful for us. It happened much faster than I ever could have imagined. And think about the fact that you can give just a handful of people a new place to work that's free of the day-to-day -day burden of a home office environment that allows them to really work differently, to interact completely around these new designs. And that team for us has allowed us to launch Alexa very early, where you can say, Alexa, tell SafeLight I broke my windshield. And it's also allowed us to get into machine learning. So now we could take all the photos our technicians have collected and actually start to see if damage for repair replacement, what, what it would be predicted based off a photo that a customer could send in. And these things are very early on, including things after our recent visit to Seattle with Amazon, like Amazon Connect, a contact center that's based in the cloud. And then Lex, an actual conversational IVR. And these tools are so easy to use, you don't even need a developer. I could help create those, but you have to understand how the customer wants to interact with them. And so by doing this and moving more quickly through an innovation lab, they've actually helped us build our AI roadmap and they become our early grow function. But it's important to note that you have to let them fail fast and that done is better than perfect sometimes because it's important to roll these things out, especially things like machine learning early because when the customer uses it, it gets smarter. And so that's really a mindset shift. Now, when we were getting serious about innovation, we did our research. And so we went out and we asked our partners and industry leaders about their innovation labs and how they were innovating. And we really found a lot of different answers. There was no one that was like the other. Some were out there looking at new currencies and how to work in different environments. Others were really just trying to put the day-to-day -day in place and see their roadmap come to life. We actually then took all of those great ideas and developed how we wanted to work. And so this chart might actually help you if you're thinking about innovation. You can see that there's really three different ways that you can innovate, different levels of innovation. We started in the transformational quadrant. And when you think about it, who wouldn't want to start there? But the thought that we were going to actually create a new market might have been a little big for a handful of people. And so then we've really come back to the core. And the core is really that more everyday, how do I help the customer experience right now faster than I could have if I kept it in-house? And we're starting to lean out to that adjacent area. But beyond innovation, you also have to think about your technical architecture and how you're structured. We have a goal of becoming AI-enabled in the way that we interact with our customers by 2021, and that's a bold goal. And so to do that, it really requires that we become real time in how we interact with data and also services. Developing things like APIs will help us move faster in working with different services. We also need to move off of our legacy solutions. And then APIs, once they're out there, will help us extend and be able to use AI-enabled solutions such as wearables and chatbots. So the other thing with real time is we needed to move our data to the cloud. 
And at the end of 2016, we had 100% of our information and functionality sitting on premise here in Columbus, Ohio. At the end of 2017, I'm excited to share that we had 30% of all of our information and data in the cloud. And by moving the easy things first, it really helps your teams learn how to start to do that, how to get comfortable working in a new environment. So my recommendation is start soon. So innovation is really about meeting the unmet and unarticulated needs of the customer. Sometimes they don't know, and sometimes they do know. But if they do know and you're listening, you'll hear them. It's also important to be empathetic, to really walk in their shoes, and to be curious, and to do it all with a little humility. So let's go back to the point about being curious. So this one's big for me. Curious companies innovate. Curiosity can be encouraged. Innovation is the outcome. So if you can create your company so that it's curious, you'll be great at innovation. Now you're probably wondering, so what's this really look like at SafeLight? What's the experience like? How, do, how does it really feel, especially for those of you who raised your hands and were five years ago? It's changed quite a bit. It's still based in the premise of our great technician. And so I'd like to show you a video of what this really looks like. And it has just a sneak peek of a few things coming soon in the near future. All of the technology and the customer experience enhancements that you saw in that video will be made available to our customers sometime in the next 12 months. So once again, innovation isn't about five, six years down the road. Our approach to it is you must act fast, be prepared to fail, be bold, take risks, move on. And the video you just saw is evidence of that work that we're doing in our innovation lab. So you might be wondering, hey, does all this stuff work? Transformation, innovation, really cute words. But in our case, it has worked. And as you can see on this chart, while we have been in this transformation phase for the last nine years or so, we have tripled the number of customers we serve, we've tripled our sales, and quadrupled our profits. So in our case, just from a safe life perspective, the work we've done on transformation, the work we've done on purpose and innovation have in fact paid off in a big, significant way for us. But I want to tell you, it's not about the numbers. We believe that the results of our business are the outcomes of the actions we take. And so for us, it really starts with operating on this greater purpose. The fact that we exist to make a difference, and we make a difference with our associates, we make a difference with our customers, we make a difference in the communities in which we live and work. And we do that to bring unexpected happiness to people's everyday lives. And that is the why we exist. And when we shared this with our organization, they were thrilled because it resonated with them. That is why they get up every morning. That is why they want to come to work. We're in a problem-solving business. And it takes a certain type of person to live and work in a problem-solving business in a negative services category like ours. It's what we call the safe life spirit. That's the DNA. That's the personality of our company. And there are three characteristics for our safe life spirit. We want people who have a service mindset. We want people who have a can-do attitude, and we want people that have a caring heart. Service mindset, can-do attitude, caring heart. All of our associates possess those three characteristics, and anybody who chooses to join Safe Life must possess that. So the way we have arrived at our journey, and well, we haven't arrived, but while we're on our journey, we've done it by sticking to the strategic framework. This picture up here, this temple, if you will, that is the same picture. It's been beautified over the years, but that's the same picture we showed our associates back in 2009. And so we're sticking to that. We're living the safe life spirit, and we are repetitive in our messaging to our associates, continually beating the drum. So the evolution of our strategy has not changed. And that's an important message in transformation work. If you keep changing the message year in and year out, 
you are not transforming, you're introducing programs, you're introducing new initiatives. So we stayed very true to this whole point about a, a transformation journey that we're on. The fact is we'll never get there. Our team knows this. We are so ambitious in our goal setting that we will never arrive at the journey. But we, what we will be is a better company tomorrow than we are today. So on behalf of Renee and myself, my Safe Flight colleagues that are here sucking up, and <laughs> all of our Safe Flight associates around the country, thank you for showing your interest in hearing the Safe Flight story. Thank you. One final favor. Break a windshield today and give us a call. <laughs> <laughs>